Input Output System, and Input Output Model. Hello everyone. Let us discuss Input Output System in detail. A variety of peripherals delivers different amounts of data at variable space and in various different formats to the computer. These peripherals might be connected directly or via expansion buses to the computer system. Most of the peripherals are slower than the processing unit and memory units. Data formats and word lengths of the peripherals also may vary from the processing unit. We need some model to handle the communication of the processor with the peripherals. This is also called input-output model. Input-output model is the intermediate between the processor and input-output devices. It controls data exchange between main memory and input-output devices or between CPU registers and input-output devices. Input-output model maintains the coordination between peripherals and CPU. Input-output model also provides an interface for internal interconnection of CPU and main memory and external interconnection of system with peripherals. Input-output model also facilitates the devices with buffer and error detection mechanisms. Input-output models connect the various external devices to the processor and memory. There are three categories of the external devices. 1. Machine readable. These include this tapes, sensors, and many more. 2. Human readable. It includes monitor, printer, keyboard, and many more. 3. Communication, network interface card or NIC, modem, wireless interface card, and many more. Input output model working of an external device like 1. Control signals. The various control signals are sent via control bus to external device to determine the function to be performed. 2. Data bus. It contains a set of data bits to be sent or received from the peripherals. 3. Status signal. It indicates the status of the device. 4. Control logic. It controls the device's operations. 5. Transducer. It converts the data from electrical to other forms of energy. 6. Buffer. It is used to temporarily hold the data being transferred. Let us now discuss the functions of input-output models. Some of the major functions of input-output models are as follows. Control and timing. This function is used to provide a coordination of traffic between the peripherals and the internal resources. Some sample transactions under this are as follows. First, processor request to check the status of the input-output model. Input-output model returns the device carrying status. If the device is ready to transmit, then processor requests for the data transfer by sending some commands via control bus to the model. Input-output model receives some bytes of data from the device and transfers that data to the processor. Processor communication. It involves the following tasks. 1. Command decoding. Input-output model receives the commands that are sent by the processor via control bars with parameters on the data bars. Example, input-output model for a disk drive can get commands from the processor like read sector, seek track, write sector, and many more. 2. Data exchange. Input-output model is able to exchange the data between processor, main memory, and peripherals. 3. Status reporting. Input-output model returns the status of the peripherals to the processor like busy with process P1, ready, and many more. Address decoding. Each peripheral connected to the system has a unique address. The input-output model recognizes the address of each peripheral. Device communication. Input-output model also provides the communication between Various peripherals like status reporting. Data buffering. As the peripherals have very less data transfer speed than the processor, so some data buffers are used within the input output model to store the data sent by the processor to some peripherals. Then the data is transferred to the peripherals. 
error detecting reporting. The input output model has the capability to detect the errors and report them to the CPU. Errors can be like paper jam in the printer or detection of change bits in the pattern. Data communication errors are generally detected by the parity bit methods. So, what is the input output model structure? The answer is the communication between peripherals and processor goes across the bus. First, CPU checks the device status from the input output model. Input output model returns the status of the device like busy, ready, and minimal. If device is ready, then CPU requests for data transfer by issuing the command on control line, address on address line, and data on the data line. Input output model gets that data from the CPU. If the speed of peripheral device to which the data has to be transferred is as high as the CPU, then the data is directly transferred to that peripheral, else the data bytes sent by CPU is stored in the data buffer provided by the input output model. If the speed of the peripheral device to which the data has to be transferred is as high as the CPU, then the data is directly transferred to that peripheral, else the data bytes sent by CPU is stored in the data buffer provided by the input-output model. In response, input-output model gets some data bytes from device and transfers that to the CPU. During transfer of data bytes from peripherals to CPU, we don't need any data buffer because the speed to accept data bytes of CPU is much higher than the speed of sending data bytes by the devices. Input-output model can also take some decisions like hide or reveal various device properties to the CPU like only logical addresses are known to the CPU and physical addresses are hidden. It also supports multiple devices of same kind like a projector is connected to the computer then the system has two output devices of the same kind. Thank you and see you in our next lecture.